For all of you folks out there who've received a kidney transplant, congratulations. It's a huge achievement to have, especially for folks who are on dialysis. The quality of life is incredibly better once you have a transplant. Now, here's the question. Can something as simple as a vitamin improve your health post-kidney transplant? Well, let's dive into the results of a fascinating new study that just got published. Welcome back, everyone, to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board-certified nephrologist and an obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about all things related to nutrition and, of course, kidney health. So with that, let's dive into the results of a new study that was just published in the American Journal of Transplantation. And it was also presented at the 2023 American Transplant Congress in San Diego, California. Now, vitamin K2, which was relatively obscure, no Nobody really was talking about it, has made all sorts of waves in just about every single field. It's fantastic in terms of its multitude of benefits and is very distinct from vitamin K1. To learn the differences, you can check out some of the other videos I have on vitamin K2 on this channel. Now, what we know is that most patients who are post-kidney transplant tend to be deficient on vitamin K2 specific. And this deficiency is thought to contribute to all sorts of things like vascular calcification, stiffening of your blood vessels, and even early death. The way this whole process works is vitamin K deficiency prevents the carboxylation of a type of protein called matrix GLA protein. This protein, or MGP, is a very strong inhibitor of vascular calcification, and it needs to get carboxylated. So when you have vitamin K deficiency, it shuts down the whole cascade of events. So in this particular study, which is a randomized placebo-controlled study, the researchers wanted to see what are the benefits of giving people vitamin K2, specifically MK7. Remember, MK7 is the most bioavailable form of vitamin K2. Researchers, they divided 40 vitamin K deficient patients into two groups. One group got 12 weeks of vitamin K2 supplements and the other group got placebo. Now, what makes the study interesting is, is they wanted to make sure that these patients were vitamin K2 deficient at the beginning because in previous studies that haven't showed any link between vitamin K2 helping, some of the questions raised were it was maybe because those patients were not K2 deficient to begin with. So in this one, they define vitamin K deficiency as plasma dephosphorylated, uncarboxylated matrix GLA protein levels of 500 picomoles or higher. So what happened in this particular study? After 12 weeks of supplementation, the vitamin K status did improve, but most patients, they remained deficient. This is important to understand because they weren't able to replete all the patients, whether the dose wasn't high enough or 12 weeks wasn't long enough. And so what they found was that the supplementation with vitamin K2 did not slow calcification occurring. And this is important because the thought process was that there would be slowing of calcification. But what they did find that's very interesting is that arterial stiffness showed a decrease in the group that was receiving vitamin K2. One of the explanations on the calcification front was when you look at patients who already have significant calcification, that's your kidney disease patients, that's of course your post-transplant patients, their vitamin K2 may not be enough to reverse that deep sort of strong calcification that's already occurred. But early on, vitamin K2 may play a strong role in preventing calcification. So in other words, you want to take vitamin K2 early on as a thought process. Now, when it came to arterial stiffness, what was interesting was the way the authors measured arterial stiffness was using pulse wave velocity. This is a validated test. It's been used in several studies very well. And what they showed is that in the vitamin K2 group, there was a decrease in the stiffness that was present by 0.06 meters per second. But in the placebo group, there was an increase by 0.27 meters per second. So in other words, the placebo group actually got worse, meaning they got more stiff after 12 weeks in their blood vessels versus the vitamin K group saw a slight decrease in their stiffness. The bottom line here, and what the authors also point out is, this is a small study. We would definitely want bigger studies to be able to recommend K2 to everyone. You need to make an informed decision with your own physician so you guys can talk about what are the risks, what are the benefits going on. There is fascinating data on K2 that's emerging. We need to make sure that we're incorporating whether it's through our diets or whether it's through our supplementation going on.
Now, even though we can't make a formal recommendation, it won't show up on guidelines, I would highly encourage you to do your own research and talk to your healthcare provider. And there you have it. As always, I always want to keep you updated on the latest studies that are coming out in the field of nutrition, in the field of kidney health, and to make sure that you guys stay up to date. So with that, my ask always is, is if you like this work, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you hit that bell icon for notifications. I would love to get your feedback on future topics. And as always, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys next time.